Welcome to worship, St. John's Lutheran Church and friends. It is so good that you are joining us today as we come together as God's people to sing, to pray, to hear God's word, and to share a meal together. At this point, I think my only announcement for the day is the voting is continuing for a new logo for St. John's. Again, you can vote as often as you want once a week. <laughs> so if you change your mind from one week to the next, uh, that's okay. Or if you really think you have another idea based upon the uh, options that have been given and you would like to submit that, please do that as well. Uh, we'll see where this all ends. We'll be voting through the end of August with an announcement on September 12th that introduces the new logo to you. So please do be a part of that. This is a community event and a community choice. So continue to uh, think about that and pray about that and see what speaks to you. I believe those are our announcements for today. So let's pause, take a breath, and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us, and we eat and are satisfied. Fill us in this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, all you children of God. Today we're hearing again about bread. And so I want to talk a little bit about bread. This is one of my favorite breads. It's a bagel. Recognize it? Now, some people really like the flavors, the different flavors, whether that be blueberry or cinnamon or Asiago cheese. But honestly, my favorite bagel is this one. It's just a plain, old, ordinary bagel. I don't like it sliced. I don't like it toasted. I actually don't want anything on it. I just eat it just the way it is. Because you know what? It just tastes delicious. So I want you to think about your favorite bread. Because Jesus talks about bread a lot. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. That is what we're going to hear in the gospel reading today. So this little piece of bread called, we call a bagel. It's basically flour and some water, maybe a little bit of yeast, maybe a little salt, maybe a little sugar, but it's just plain ordinary bagel, plain ordinary bread. But Jesus isn't plain old ordinary bread. Jesus is something special. And when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, Jesus is saying, I am all you need. And it doesn't mean that we don't need to eat and we don't need to sleep and we don't need to drink water. It just means that Jesus fills us in those moments in life when we're sad, when we're scared, when we don't know what to do next. Jesus comes to us and says, I am the bread of life. Jesus says, come to me. I will feed you. And with what I feed you with, no one else can. Not plain, ordinary bread like this, nor fancy bread. Jesus just comes to us and fills up not just our tummies, but fills up our hearts with love, taking away the fear, the sadness, and filling us with joy, and filling us with what we need to be with others who are feeling sad and lonely and afraid. So the next time you eat bread, I want you to think about, I want you to think about Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, is what he says. I want you to think about how Jesus fills you in your own special way. How does Jesus come into your life, giving you what you need so that he is truly your bread of life. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you feed us. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you walk with us through the happy moments and the sad moments, that you walk with us wherever we go in this world, that you feed us and you remind us that you do fill us up with you. In your name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, 
Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Psalm 78. We'll read it responsively. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and by his power he let out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp, all around their dwellings. And they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean, but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Our gospel for today comes from John, the sixth chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who has, he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give to us then so that we may see it 
and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, so give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you feed us. You feed us with sunshine and rain, with heat and cool, with friends and family. You feed us with food and drink. Today we say thank you, Lord, that you feed us. Amen. So we get to keep talking about bread. For those of you who worshiped with us last week, you heard the story of the five loaves and two fish and how it fed a multitude of people and there was more left over than what they started with. And today is the continuation right after that story. Notice they keep crossing this Sea of Galilee, going from one side to the other and the crowds are following them. And Jesus today is talking about the bread of life. It's a metaphor. It's hard to understand exactly what Jesus is talking about here when he says, I am the bread of life. I am the one who feeds you. I am the one who cares for you. It is me. I am the bread of life. And he refers to that Old Testament story when the Israelite people were making their way through the wilderness and they got hungry. Now, if there ever was an example of a whiny people, it was those people in the wilderness, right? I kind of get it. They were released from their slavery, but now they're wandering through this desert and there's not food, and there's not water, and it feels like God has abandoned them. And their only desire is, let us go back to being slaves. At least then we knew what was expected of us, and we knew what was coming to us. Out here, there are no rules, it feels like. And so as you follow that story of the Exodus, the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land, you hear those people over and over just begging to be cared for. And the word manna is used. And manna is some kind of substance that gives them life. We picture it as a bread-like substance that appears on the ground every morning. And they're not to hoard it, because if they hoard it, it will rot overnight. So every day, God provides them with this manna so that they will be cared for every single day. And all that God asks is that they trust it will be there in the morning. We've been using a confession these last few weeks where I get to say to you, beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven. So as we trans make that transfer from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we don't get bread on the ground, we get Jesus. We get Jesus every day, the manna from heaven coming to provide for us each and every day. As I was thinking about 
this whole notion of I am the bread of life. I was drawn to the explanation of the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread, we pray. And Martin Luther, in his explanation in the small catechism, writes this. It might be in a little different language than some of you memorized it, but the idea is the same. What then does daily bread mean? Everything included in the necessities and nourishment for our bodies, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, farm, fields, livestock, money, property, and upright spouse, upright children, upright members of the household, upright and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, decency, honor, good friends, faithful friend, neighbors, and the like. Wow, what a list, huh? Daily bread is what we need to live. To be healthy of body, mind, and spirit. So when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, and Jesus comes to us and says, I am the bread of life. How do we put that together? Because there are times and there are people for whom that list is not a true list. There are people that are hungry. There are people who are seeking shelter. There are people who don't have people. Family, friends, neighbors, others in their household. So how do we put that all together when we know that list is not true for all people? How do we seek safety when safety eludes us? How do we care for those basic necessities of life, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of those whom we encounter? Notice that when we pray that Lord's Prayer, it's not give me, it's give us. Give us today our daily bread. It's not about a me and Jesus thing. It's about us as community. It's about us caring for the others so that they too can check all the boxes on that list. We are called to be responsible for each other. We are called to be compassionate for each other. We are called to care for each other and to give what others need. A couple of weeks ago, prior to worship, there was a young man here. He comes here actually quite often who is in a real state. He just needed something to get through the day. And when I handed him a little bit of money, he burst into tears. Wasn't enough to get him very far, but it was more than what he had. That's what we're called to do. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are called not only to hoard it for ourselves, but to make sure everyone has the basics. It may not be exactly what you want. Trust me, the manna was not what the people of Israel wanted. They wanted something else, but manna is what they got, and it was sufficient to sustain them. Helping each other doesn't mean we have to be fancy. Helping each other just means we need to be present. We need to look at the other and say, what can I help you with? What can we help you with to get to that place 
where you too can pray the words, because sometimes in life we cannot pray those words. And that's where we, God's people, say the words for all. Give us this day our daily bread. When Jesus is talking to the people, and he says, I am the bread of life. He is saying to the people, come. Come and see. Come and be a part of this. Open up your hearts and your minds to thinking about the world in a new way and thinking about life in a new way. Come. Come so that you too can be fed. Come so that you too will be given something to drink. So that you won't be hungry and thirsty again. These are really good words to hang on to. Especially in those moments when life doesn't seem like it's giving you what you need. We're not talking about wants. We're talking about what you need. So this list that Martin Luther says, what does daily bread mean? It is about everything, everything of life to look at the other, to look at creation and say, what do you need? What do you need? So that you too can never be hungry or thirsty again. What do you need for your daily bread? And what do you have to give so that others too Maybe have daily bread. Amen.
we are bold to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, today for our prayers, I will read a petition, and I would invite you in the silence following that to raise your own prayers based upon the subject of that petition. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for each day that you make new. Today, we especially thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for all gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gift of relationship with others, for all those who look at others with compassion and give them daily bread. for the community of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Today, we especially pray for those who govern the nations of the world, for people in countries and communities ravaged by strife or warfare or violence or terrorism, for all who work for peace and harmony especially those who work to provide daily bread to others. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For all those who are fighting fires, for all those who travel this summer, For all those who are preparing for surgery or recovering from surgery or illness. For all those who are walking with those who are recovering from tornadoes, floods, mudslides, hurricanes, or fires. For all those who have been the victims of hurricanes, tornadoes, floods. For all those whose homes have been destroyed by fire. For all those whose hearts are breaking at the death of a loved one. for the call team of St. John's Lutheran and for the pastor that you are preparing to lead this place. For the Church of Christ in every land. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us pray our offering prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. I invite you to find bread or crackers or grape juice or wine so that you too can be a part of this meal from Jesus, the bread of life. Holy God, our maker and redeemer and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. Please take your bread and know, on the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are invited to this meal from Jesus, the manna of life. Come and be fed. I invite you to take your bread and know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take your wine, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>